I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 9th of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. If you enjoy our tours of homes in different neighborhoods around the country, you're in luck. We are back for another one. This time we're heading to the barrio of Saragossa, where we will be touring a four bedroom barrio house. This is a semi colonial. This is in that colonial ish kind of style, but it's a standard barrio home. You're not going to get a lot of that old colonial feel, but you are going to get that colonial layout. So it should be pretty interesting and most importantly this is a very affordable barrio so for those of you who are looking for a little bit more space at a little bit less money this could be perfect for you so we're gonna get to that right after the bump Here in the city of Leon, Nicaragua, the barrio of Saragossa lies just west of El Centro. So this is one of the absolute old core barrios, which tends to mean it's going to be one of the more expen uh, least less expensive parts of the city, and it definitely plays out. Saragossa is very approachable, and it is very handy, so it makes for a very po good potential region for a lot of people who are looking, they want to be in the city. They want to save some money, they want to be affordable, but you want to be able to walk to everything. And you've got three really popular barrios for this purpose. One being Saragossa, one that we went to recently being Guadalupe, and the other being Labo Rio. For those who watch my show regularly and have for some time, you know that I lived in Labo Rio for all of 2022. We moved there in January and were there through December and then moved out here to Sutiava. Sutiava being a little bit farther west than those core barrios. Can we walk to downtown from here? It's plausible. I can do it, but a lot of people are pretty unhappy. Maybe if you live like on the Labo Rio border, uh, then maybe it'll work. So Sutiava lies just west of Labo Rio and Saragossa. If you're familiar with my show in Labo Rio, we are south of Ruben Dario. That is the main east-west drag coming through the city that goes west straight out of the Basilica and Central Park. Its counterpart on the north side of Ruben Dario is Saragossa. And I do have an episode, which I will do my best to link at the end of this episode, in which I walk the entirety of Saragossa and zigzag through the streets so that you can see absolutely all of it. I did that about a year ago, a little bit less. And so we know Saragossa pretty well, both because we live just a few blocks from it and because I've put in quite a bit of walking around to film it. Of those barrios, I think Saragossa actually comes in as the least expensive. It is at least less expensive than La Barrio. It may not be less expensive than Guadalupe. It's about the same size as La Barrio. It is not a really large barrio, so it is uh, only so many blocks wide, so many blocks tall. Guadalupe is a giant barrio that just goes on and on, and no one even knows exactly where it starts and stops. But Saragossa is this reasonable space north of Ruben Dario, west of downtown, and everything to the north borders the river. So that gets cut off automatically. You don't have to worry about where does the top of it go. It stops either where it hits other really obvious barrios or the water. So Saragossa is one of those places that is relatively popular with locals but is also popular with expats. Not a lot of expats. You're not going to go into Saragossa and feel like you're in any kind of enclave. You're not going to be running into expat, expats every day, but they do exist there. And I know a number of expats who choose Saragossa, uh, did I say Saragossa, as the place to be because it is more affordable, but it is so accessible to everywhere in the city, right? If you want to go to restaurants, you want to be able to go to clubs, you want to be able to go shopping and do all that on foot. You don't want to have to own a car. Saragossa is going to be perfect for you. So this is an area that people may want to consider. Now, you rarely find something fancy in Saragossa. Of course it exists. Every barrio is going to have something wildly awesome if you hunt around long enough. But for the most part, people who are looking at Saragossa are looking for and finding budget housing. You're going to get more space for less money. Often Saragossa being this old core district like La Barrio, it's old. La Barrio is the oldest of the barrio. Saragossa, I believe, is the second oldest. It feels quite old. So when we're looking at buildings here, you have to ha set your expectation. You're talking about old colonial concrete structures, you're talking about things in a barrio, you're talking about things where yes, you often get a garage, but you probably don't want a car in this area, and you're looking at cost savings, but you get decently safe. I'm not saying that Saragossa is safe safe. It's, of, of course, this is Nicaragua, everywhere is safe, right? And this is Leon, which is safe even for Nicaragua, but 
of the barrios in uh, Leon. This is one of the core ring barrios. So within the city, this is the slightly less safe area. Same as La Barrio where I lived. So if you've been watching the show and know those areas, you get you have a pretty good feel for what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like. I feel as though the streets in La Barrio give you just a little bit more space than those in Saragossa. Saragossa is a little bit on the tight side. Most of the streets are pretty small but that means everything's going to be a little bit less expensive. It also has one of the most beautiful churches in the city. The, the Iglesia Saragossa is one of my favorites. That is a nickname, not its official name, I believe. Uh, in many cases, that's how things end up getting named. I believe it has a full name in Saragossa is uh, it's Barrio. Uh, it is also the home of La Colonia here in Leon. So most people who go to Saragossa don't actually realize that that's where they're going and they're actually headed to the grocery store. La Colonia is an anchor within the community. And so because of that and La Sage uh, Colegio, which is the private high school which borders La Colonia to the south, those are really important landmarks in the Saragossa region. Saragossa goes all the way east up to Il Convento, uh, which is where uh, El Centro begins. And in the southeast corner of Saragossa, you get a lot of uh, uh, shopping. You get a lot of clothing shops, variedades, and that sort of thing. As you go more into the core of Saragossa, you're going to find mostly it's a residential neighborhood, mostly houses, but you're also going to find uh, a decent number of bars and some number of restaurants. There are people going out in this area. It is not like El Centro. It is more than Labo Rio. Uh, so I think Saragossa is, for those who are, who are cost conscious or interested in being walkable to downtown, it is one of your best options along with, of course, San Felipe in the northwest, Labo Rio just south of Saragossa, and Guadalupe to the south. To the east, you tend to have a little bit of a drop off uh, in quality of life and uh, cost of living does go down, but that is where you're actually gonna run into your, your bit more dangerous barrios, Calvarito, Il Calvario, and those areas that sit uh, between uh, El, C El Centro and the bypass, uh, including Primero de Mayo. Uh, so that, so none of it's bad. All of it is something you can consider. Don't, don't take that as it's dangerous and you should avoid it, but you're generally going to find your expats interested more towards the west or south or that little bit to the northwest. There's only a small corner before the river cuts off, so it's, there's a reason why the north tends to be a little bit less popular until you get to like Fatima and then suddenly it's super popular again. You just have like this gap. You have a little bit before you. So directly to the north, you tend to go a bit north. The other directions, you tend to be right against downtown. And then to the east, while you can do it, it just isn't as popular and it's a, it's a, it's a slightly rougher area uh, overall. So it, you, expats are m least likely to be in that zone uh, by choice. It just, it just isn't as attractive. So all that said, we're going to go into this. This is a four bedroom, very cost effective house right in the middle of Saragossa. It's a very handy location. It is certainly not the flashiest of houses. You're going to want to do a lot of paint. And before we get into that, I do want to point something out that I was watching this video, uh, getting ready to, to, to do the, the, um, speaking over the video and one of the things that occurred to me is that in North America, we're so used to drywall. Not every house, but, but the vast majority of houses have drywall. And with drywall, you get these very smooth, very clean walls. And when you replace it, if it gets old, if it gets damaged, you simply rip it out and put new in. I know that's not the simplest thing, but it's very doable. We've almost all have uh, gone through some amount of drywall replacement over the years, right? It's just a natural part of owning a home in North America. So we're very used to it. And that means we're very used to these very clean, very flush walls. Here in Central America, it is very uncommon to use drywall. Drywall uh, does not hold up well and it is not cost effective for the climate and it's not great for the cooling situation that is needed. So here, concrete walls are far more popular and concrete becomes dusty and dirty and it, you can't replace it. You have to clean it, strip it, paint it again. Um, and so because of that, when I'm looking at these houses, I've been here a while. So you start to get used to that walls are going to be dirty. And remember, we've talked about this before and other things, people do not clean their houses before doing showings. So houses that will be newly painted, houses that will be newly scrubbed down, they're in their worst possible state when we're filming them in most cases. 
not ideal, but it is what it is. That's how the houses are treated. So you're going to see scuff marks on the wall, all kinds of things you wouldn't see in a house showing in the United States. This house is no different. You have to look at all these houses with an eye of, unless you get the like really nice ones we showed in Fatima recently, you need to think of it from a, we're going to go in, it's going to be concrete walls, it's going to be old paint, it's going to be scuffed up, it's going to be dirty, people are not going to have taken care of it, there's going to be trash on the floors, uh, it's going to get cleaned, and then you're going to want to consider maybe painting it or scrubbing it down or whatever. You're going to need to do something to make it really nice for you, but it can be. It's that concrete on one side means that you don't get this completely fresh uh, wall from time to time. You have to just work with what you have. And on the other side, people don't keep things clean or clean it up when you're going to do a showing. So you're seeing in North America, you're seeing the, the best a house ever is. And in Central America, you're seeing the worst a house ever is when doing house showings of these non-expat houses. So just bear that in mind, because this house is going to be a little bit rough in some areas, especially the garage, but it's a garage. Um, but remember, it's a garage when you see it. And they do have a storage room that they just threw all their trash into. So it's piles of just wooden stuff. That doesn't look ideal when we're doing a showing. But when you look at the kitchen or you're looking at the dining room, you're looking at the outdoor garden area, it's very, oh, you can really see how beautiful this house would be to live in. And then you have to you have to remember oh but i'll paint these rooms and some of the bedrooms you know when they're, they're terrible pink colors just paint it and uh and solve those problems so without further ado let's head into saragossa and take a walk through this lovely very affordable house with plenty of space for you to do whatever it is you want to do in the middle of the city all right let's head into this house here we have we're actually looking from the garage which i mentioned is a bit rough into what is the living room space there's a lot of work that needs to be done here. A lot of cleanup, a lot of painting. You can see there's good air, there's good light. These are very high ceilings. It's hard to tell. These are quite tall. They get a little bit lower here. This is kind of the main salon in this L shape. So it's a little bit awkward, but it's not bad. The room on the left, you'll notice two sets of windows into this space. We have the long, narrow layout with the big open space, this kind of half converted colonial space that is so common in Leon. And here we're looking from the same place in into the living room again. This is the first bedroom right there that we're looking towards. And we get lots of light in the middle of the house. It's very nice. This would be perfect for potted plants. Uh, in theory, you could have a water feature. It could be used as an outdoor space. And let's head into the bedrooms. These are all pretty dark. It's very bright outside and very dark in the rooms, but for the most part it works. A little bit odd ceiling work here. The windows are currently closed, but these open into uh, different parts of the house. And we have dedicated bathroom here. Definitely a little bit rough. Everything is concrete though. So remember, we talked about this in a short. It makes things look a lot older and rougher than they actually are. It needs to be cleaned, it needs to be painted, but that can go a really long way. This back wall is in this odd green, for example. You could paint that. This is uh, the second bedroom in blue. All the bedrooms have their own bathrooms. They have the built-in, not a walk-in, but a closet space. That's not too bad. These are not huge rooms, but they are not tiny. You can see the outdoor space and the roofing there, very common. All of this is very standard. This is Saragossa, so we're in the middle of the city. Uh, we're, we're really dealing with older buildings at lower cost. Here's uh, bedroom number three. Um, a little bit smaller, but still all of these are pretty decent in size. Um, it seems pretty narrow on the video, but it, it is serviceable. It's on the small side. This is the one all the way in the back right next to the kitchen. We're going to come back and see that. First, the outdoor patio. Now, it's larger than many, but it's because the utility space is actually on the back patio. So just be aware that you're going to be doing your laundry outside, and that's where it's going to be. This gives you more patio flexibility, but it also puts your utilities into your patio space, which is not necessarily ideal. The backyard is nice. There's nothing done with it currently. Uh, there you can see the patio from the back of the backyard, but you can see that there's plenty of room if you wanted to garden, if you wanted to put in a lawn, if you wanted to put in a trampoline, any kind of entertainment area, uh, do anything with it. And if you want to grill, you want to entertain out here, of course, you'd want to do some decorating, but there is plenty of space. Keep in mind, this is a low cost option. This is a very value conscious mid city house. So we're not looking for fancy here. We're looking for ample space. We're looking for amazingly convenient location. We're looking for very affordable, which this is at 250 per month. This is a lot of space at 250. All right, we're heading here back in the living room. On the right, there is the garage space. 
not very attractive. Of course, it will get cleaned up, but this is a decent physical amount of space. You could use this for a lot of things. If you don't want to use this as a garage, this could be used as another living room. You could make it into a video game or a dining room. There's, it's a big space. You could do a lot with that. And then to the left of it, kind of blocked off by this table, is um, what's actually like a motorcycle garage now is how it's actually meant to be. That's a door to the outside, but they're just storing a lot of junk in here. If that was cleaned up, this would be a very long, narrow room that you could keep a motorcycle or similar in. Here we can see the garage again from another angle. Got the front onto the street to the left and the living room. I'm sorry, on the right and the living room here on the left. Now we're going to take a look at the dining room and kitchen. So this is where the house is a little bit more formal. Here is the dining room. This is a common layout with the window into the mid center of the house and a window into the kitchen. Decent space for a dining room. You're not going to throw big dinner parties, but you can really host it there. The kitchen is on the small side, but not too bad. As always, bring your own appliances so that will fill in those spaces and uh, you've got enough room to work easy to serve into the dining room, easy to move with the big open hallway through the house. Uh, not too bad. We were generally standing in the space. Both Marcella and I were uh, decently impressed with the flow and the feel of the house and certainly the value for the money. That's a really big deal. For cooling all of the bedrooms along the side, they open into the house rather than into uh, the outside space. But remember, we have this big open uh, open topped outdoor space in the middle of the house. So those windows that open into the middle of the house have a lot of fresh air. And this is the street directly in front of the house. You can see it there just a little bit in front of us. And uh, so this house cools front to back. And uh, I misspoke, this is the house right there in, in the green. And uh, we're going to see just a little bit. That's the, the church of Saragossa there uh, down the street just a little ways. That's our real estate agent popping out of the house. Uh, and we're walking past the front of it right now. So definitely this is an old house in the middle of the city. Uh, but uh, the location was Saragossa right there with the church. Uh, that is a major um, private school just in front of it. You have La Colonia and grocery stores right down the street. And on our way back, we saw the cotton candy sales guy out on the road and we just pulled over and went running down the street. We're not exactly running, but well, Marcel is kind of jogging there uh, to try to catch the cotton candy guy because she wanted cotton candy. I'm not big on cotton candy, so I don't care, but she was very excited. And this is a very Nicaraguan thing. They sell cotton candy everywhere at all hours of the day. Eight o'clock in the morning, you'll see people selling it out in front of schools, all kinds of stuff. It is a cheap snack you can do on the street. It's easy for people to sell, and so it's a very popular and it's a big, colorful thing. So they look kind of neat walking down the road. So I, you'll see people just selling them on the street any day of the week. Uh, anytime you go to a fair or anything like that, you're going to have uh, people selling it, that and popcorn. And there's a few things that are just really popular out on the streets. This is one that I find very entertaining as an American. <laughs> we do not have cotton candy like under normal life circumstances. It's not just something that's out there all the time that you just encounter every day on the street. Uh, and for it to be so common and popular here in Nicaragua, I always find to be very, very funny and uh, an interesting part of uh, the cultural experience here in Nicaragua. So we really like this house. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, I hope it's useful. If you have any questions, of course, get down in the comments, ask away, let us know if you're interested. We're, we're not agents, right? We're just going to introduce you to the agent that showed us the house and you can interact with her directly. We are in no way compensated for anything with any of these houses. So if you're interested, uh, shoot us an email, which we will show at the end of the video and we'll uh, help you out. It's always good to get some cotton candy after you're out looking at houses. It's amazing how popular that is here in Nicaragua. I would never have guessed that cotton candy was such a thing that they're always selling it on the street. We see it so often. It's wild and they sell it everywhere, right? Beach, city, you name it. There's always cotton candy for sale and early in the morning. That's one of the funniest things. So thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, help support our work, getting the word out about houses, bringing you information about what is available, what could be available, what you could do with it, any of that stuff, because we're not agents. We don't get paid for any of this. We only make money from your donations. If you want to help contribute to all that, 
Check the link. I'm going to put it right up above. It's buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. You have to type the whole thing in. It goes directly to my page. You can buy me personally a coffee. It comes straight to me and helps fund all of the work that we're doing here. If you're interested in help with relocation, whether it's finding a house or just you want to have a call and someone to talk to, or you want a private tour to take you around the country, shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. We'd love to talk and see how we can help and share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Post these links on the Twitters, on the, the, the that new threads, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Reddit, you name it. Let people know about the show. Tell your friends, and I will see all of you tomorrow.